The U.S. Marines. They're the best amphibious troops in the world. They storm the beach on a cushion of air, arrive on the battlefield out of thin air, and hit a bullseye a mile away. They're unrivaled, unyielding, and unstoppable. Today's United States Marine Corps is designed for decisive action. From land, sea, or air, they hit the enemy hard, anywhere in the world, on short notice. To fulfill their missions, they field some of the deadliest and most specialized machines of war. For centuries, navies have had small marine forces for protecting their ships and carrying out raids against enemy positions on the shore. The importance of a dedicated Marine Corps to the United States reached a new height in World War II. Highly trained troops, supported by specialized equipment, were needed to wrest control of many Pacific islands from Japanese defenders. Battles like Tarawa and Iwo Jima became the stuff of legend. They reinforced the Marine Corps' importance to America's armed forces. The equipment used to project Marine power ashore has developed significantly since World War II. New types of specialized Navy amphibious assault ships provide a sophisticated mix of naval and air support. Helicopters are especially critical to battlefield mobility. The operations of World War II were restricted to certain types of surface assault craft embarked from a vessel. Now we have the, that capability in addition uh, to the uh, air assault, heliborn assault uh, capability, which uh, greatly enhances our strike profile and allows us to uh, a wider variety of missions in support of the amphibious landing ashore. Despite its sophisticated hardware, the heart of the Marine Corps is its superb light infantry. The weaponry of the Marines is designed for portability. A rifleman is equipped with the M16 assault rifle, which can be fitted with a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. Fire support for the rifle squad and platoon is provided by the M249 squad automatic weapon and the M60 E3 light machine gun. These can be supplemented by the Mark 19 40 mm automatic grenade launcher, which can be mounted on a Humvee. Marine rifle companies also use lightweight 60 mm mortars. For defense against enemy aircraft and helicopters, the Marines use the Stinger missile. The Stinger is shoulder mounted and employs an identification friend or foe or IFF system to prevent accidentally downing friendly aircraft. Its fire and forget infrared seeker has proven to be highly effective even against sophisticated jet attack aircraft. 
Tanks are a constant danger to infantry troops, and the Marines use the Dragon guided anti-tank missile. And the vehicle mounted tow missile launcher to destroy enemy tanks. U.S. Marine tank units depend on the M1 Abrams. One of the world's most powerful tanks, the M1 is armed with a 120 millimeter gun. Its 1500 horsepower gas turbine engine muscles it through rough terrain. At ranges exceeding 1800 yards, it achieves pinpoint accuracy thanks to its advanced fire control system. For scouting operations, the Marines use the nimble LAV-25. Variants of this armored wheeled vehicle serve in command and control, anti-tank and recovery capacities. The LAV is typical of the Marines' focus on strategic mobility. It is light enough to be rapidly deployed from the air, slung under the belly of a CH-53E helicopter. Beyond their equipment and technology, what distinguishes the Marines is their training and organization. Uh, Marines pride themselves in discipline and operational readiness. We train probably harder than anybody else. Also, uh, the Marine Corps uh, has an air side, we have a, su a support side, and we have a, a ground side. So we have everything all combined in one. We don't have to request support from any of the other branches of the service except for the Navy to get us there. And once we're there, we're able to conduct operations for 30 days ashore without resupply. So we're self-contained. And uh, when you put Marines ashore, you know that they're able to do the job until further forces can come on and uh, reinforce them. The one armored vehicle unique to the Marine Corps is the Amphibious Assault Vehicle, or Amtrak. Amtraks were developed in the late 1930s. Their unique mobility in both water and on land made them invaluable in the amphibious assaults during the Central Pacific battles of World War II. The first Amtraks, like the LVT-1, used at the Battle of Tarawa, had no overhead armor. Post-war designs like the LVT-3C used in Korea and the later LVT-P-5 deployed in Vietnam had more powerful engines and better armor protection. This led to the AAV-7, which features full armor protection and superior mobility in water and on land. With their many advantages over conventional landing craft, amphibious assault vehicles form the first wave of any contested beach assault. They are armored, so they protect their troops against machine gun and artillery fire. And their tracked suspension allows them to operate over reefs and other beach obstructions, which would stop other landing craft. The AAV-7 swimming ability comes from its boat-like hull and special water jet propulsion system. The water jets draw in water from above the track and expel it out the rear. They give the vehicle a speed of seven knots in the water. The special watertight hull allows it to operate in 10-foot swells. Onshore, the amphibious assault vehicle serves as an armored troop carrier, able to transport 25 troops inland at speeds up to 45 miles per hour under armored protection. The AAV-7 can be armed with a 50 caliber machine gun or a Mark 1940 millimeter machine gun. trend for the Marines to launch over the horizon attacks, the 20-ton AAV-7 is quite slow in the water. This dilemma is addressed with a radical design of the new Expeditionary Fighting Vehicle, or EFV. A 
A careful study of ship dynamics revealed that a well-positioned bow plane at the front of the vehicle would cause it to rise out of the water as if it were on water skis. Skirts at the side of the vehicle can be lowered to cover the tracks, eliminating a major source of drag. And finally, by adding a powerful turbine engine, the EFE can achieve speeds of well over 30 knots. As quick as it may be in the water, its primary job remains to deliver the marine forces to the battlefield. Its hull must be spacious enough to carry a fully equipped marine combat unit to the beach and into battle. The EFV is expected to enter service in 2008, and with over 1,000 vehicles ordered by the Marines, it will provide the U.S. Marine Corps unparalleled amphibious assault capability. Since World War II, the U.S. Navy has developed a wide range of sophisticated warships specifically intended for amphibious operations. Among the largest and most capable of these are amphibious assault ships such as the Tarawa class, USS Saipan. Saipan in an amphibious operation plays a very central role because she has most of the forces. We have all the uh, helicopters uh, and the Harriers and uh, we would have the greatest majority of the troops and so the troops would go ashore by helicopter uh, from our deck or by boat uh, through our well deck. At first glance, ships like the Saipan resemble regular aircraft carriers, but there are substantial differences. The biggest difference between uh, the LHA and, the, and the, the regular aircraft carrier as we know it are the catapults and arresting gear. We don't have catapults and arresting gear. Uh, we cannot operate conventional uh, fixed-wing uh, aircraft. The Saipan carries aircraft that directly support marine operations. This includes transport helicopters and Harrier vertical takeoff jets. The Saipan is an amphibious assault ship, so the Marine aircraft are aboard, basically uh, to transport the Marines and to assault the beach. During an amphibious launch, we uh, have all the Marines lined up underneath the deck here. We move the aircraft on spot, they turn up once they're ready to go. We give the high sign, the people bring the troops on, they're loaded in the aircraft and they're gone in five minutes. As soon as they're leaving, the other people are already hooked up with tractors to the uh, second wave of aircraft and they're pulling them out. It's really fast pace. They come in, the aircraft come back and refuel. We refuel them in 10, 15 minutes, load more troops and they're gone. But the Saipan and her sister ships of the Tarawa class are more than just many aircraft carriers. They have large well decks at the stern, allowing them to land and embark landing craft, which bring supplies and troops to the beach. Inside her cavernous hull are storage facilities for the supplies needed to conduct an amphibious landing. Supporting ships like the Saipan are the smaller amphibious transport docks, the LPDs and the dock landing ships like the LSD-37 Portland. The entire stern of the LSD is filled with a large well deck, which acts as a miniature harbor. We have uh, a well deck that is capable of ballasting down and bringing water into the well so we can bring assault boats uh, or landing craft uh, inside our well. So we can either be dry or wet depending on what our mission is and what we're loading. This well deck is 422 feet long and 48 feet wide. In the case of the AAVs, we bring them all the way into a dry deck and, and position them uh, in the forward part of the ship uh, all the way back. For the Marine Corps, these amphibious assault ships offer valuable versatility demanded for complex amphibious operations. The Navy still uses landing craft to bring supplies ashore. The main innovation in transporting supplies is the LCAC for landing craft air cushion. 
The LCAX propulsion system creates a pillow of air underneath the main platform. The air pillow is contained by special skirts around its edge. Forward propulsion comes from a pair of large propellers at the stern of the craft. Riding on a cushion of air, it is five times faster than a normal craft, capable of 50 miles an hour in calm seas. In addition, the LCAC can bring the supplies right onto the beach. The LCAC can carry over 60 tons of supplies. Its sophisticated controls are closer to that of a jet aircraft than a conventional ship. The LCAC can be used in conjunction with the Navy's amphibious warships. During long sea voyages, the LCACs are nestled inside the well docks of the mothership. The helicopter is one of the most important developments in marine operations since World War II. Troop-carrying helicopters can carry out landings far from enemy defenses with speed and precision. For objectives ashore, 15, 20 kilometers and, and farther, are greatly enhanced by the helicopter. The amphibious assault vehicle, although a tremendous asset, is uh, slower, takes longer time to seize a certain objective. Helicopters are used in amphibious operations in conjunction with amphibious vehicles and craft. The combination of air and sea-based power compromises enemy defenses and adds a critical element of surprise. The helicopter uh, gives the Marine commander a large option. He's able to conduct the amphibious assault uh, with uh, an added surprise to the enemy. When you come across the beach, whether you're coming across in mic boats or LCACs or AAVs, um, you're coming right at the beach. And uh, if the enemy's defended the beach, he's got his defenses oriented towards you. If you have a helicopter, you can use that to put troops in at the decisive time on the enemy's flank. It'll surprise him and it'll force him to commit some of his troops to another area that he wasn't ready for. Long-range threats in the form of anti-ship missiles have begun to pose a particular hazard to landing forces. These weapons can have devastating consequences on amphibious assault force. Concerned that these missiles could destroy transports anchored offshore, the Marines developed a new tactic called over-the-horizon landings. Because the coastal anti-ship missile launchers cannot see over the horizon, the Naval Landing Task Force remains miles away and out of sight. But with the task force so far out to sea, conventional AAVs under constant enemy fire would take too long to reach the shore. Existing helicopters do not have the speed, range or endurance for this mission either. As a result, the Marines are pinning their hopes on a radical new type of aircraft to carry out over-the-horizon missions, the V-22 Osprey. The Osprey combines the best features of helicopters and conventional aircraft in one package. It can take off vertically like a helicopter. Then, once in flight, its engines move to a more conventional, horizontal position, enabling it to fly as fast as a traditional transport aircraft. Though quite large, the Osprey can be stowed below deck. To minimize its size and meet flight readiness times, the V-22 can quickly modify its wing and rotor assemblies. Remarkably, this process takes less than 90 seconds without the aid of ground crew. The Marines plan to field approximately 350 Ospreys, replacing the Corps' aging fleet of medium-lift helicopters. The CH-46 Sea Knight has long served as the backbone of Marine Helleborne Assault. It is a helicopter equivalent of the amphibious assault vehicle, also carrying 25 troops. It is fitted with a rear ramp and can carry small vehicles if needed. The home of the CH-46 during amphibious operations is the LHA amphibious assault ships. The Marines board their helicopters from the holds below and can be over the beach only minutes after launch. 
In addition to troop transport, the Sea Knight can also be used for many other missions, such as supporting marine raiding parties ashore. If need be, the CH-46 needn't land, but can extract the raiding party in a spectacular fashion. The heavy lift for Marine Hellebore assaults comes from the massive CH-53E Super Stallion. The Super Stallion can carry up to 55 troops and has greater range than the CH-46. It is often used to carry heavy loads and supplies for Marine assaults. It can even carry the Marines' light armored vehicles and extend their range through mid-air refueling. The teeth of the Helleborn Assault are the AH-1T Sea Cobra and the improved AH-1W Super Cobra. The AH-1 attack helicopter can escort the transport helicopters during a Helleborn Assault and provide gunfire, missile and rocket support to the troops once they land. Marine aviation is not limited to helicopters. The Corps fields high-performance jet aircraft, such as the F-A-18 Hornet Strike Fighter. The Hornet Strike Fighter is an all-weather enemy interceptor, which can also attack ground targets. Air-to-air -air armaments are carried on nine external wing stations. And the Hornet can also carry air-to-ground missiles, guided bombs, or external fuel tanks for long-range missions. Airborne command and control and radar suppression is provided by the EA-6B Prowler. The Prowler not only provides surveillance and electronic radar jamming, but is fitted with harm high-speed anti-radiation missiles for direct suppression of enemy air defenses. These aircraft can operate from land bases or serve alongside Navy strike units from the deck of Navy supercarriers. But the most recognizable marine jet is the AV-8B Harrier II jump jet. The Harrier was originally developed in Britain. The Marines recognized the suitability of the jump jet concept for their demanding assignments. The Harrier does not need a conventional runway for takeoffs. It can operate equally well from the small deck of an amphibious assault ship or from a small clearing of land in a Marine beachhead. The Harrier can carry out ground attack missions in close air support of Marine ground troops using laser-guided bombs. And it can be armed with a variety of air-to-air -air missiles to protect the beachhead from enemy aircraft. The U.S. Marine Corps is a fighting force especially suited to America's global maritime strategy. Its unique blend of highly motivated men and women, supported by the latest advances in high technology weapon systems, has earned it a well-deserved reputation among the elite fighting forces of the world.